Hi everyone, for those of you who follow that Nikon guy, you'd know that I've just successfully launched a book on Kickstarter, Private Bodies, and that needs to be now delivered on this year. So I have a big job ahead of me of editing images that I've been shooting over three years to be ready to print. Now, I'm a bit old school when it comes to my editing. I like to get it as close as I can in the camera, and then I do fairly basic editing in the scale of what some people do. Um, and I know how to do what I do, and I there's probably a lot of stuff that I don't really know how to do. But I'm quite old school in that I often use a trackball still, and then just the touchpad on my MacBook Pro. Bit old school. I am stepping up for this editing project and moving up into the world of Wacom tablets. Now, full disclosure, how this all came about, uh, at my Sydney photo walk, I hit it off with a guy who was one of the walkers. At the end of the day, he introduced himself as working for Wacom and said, if you ever want to test out some of our stuff, then get in touch and let me know. So I've actually got two. This is the first one I'm gonna to introduce to you. This is the Intuos 5 Touch. Now, this is the medium size, and to be honest, it's quite big. Um, you can get a smaller one, which is more suitable to travel, but this one still does have a little carry case that you can carry it around in, and it has an optional uh, Wi-Fi unit, which I have got as well. So in this video, I'm gonna open it up, show you it, set it up and get it running. And then after I've done the editing project or as I go through it, I'll give you my feedback on how it is to actually use. And of course, I'm going in this blind. I haven't used a tablet before. Opening up the box, and it is a big old box. We have a postcard, lovely. Let's just open this. Okay. The actual tablet itself, it's, uh, it's got a bit of weight to it, um, and it's about the same size in terms of surface area as the 15.6 MacBook Pro Retina. Get out all the little bits and pieces, then we'll pop this box out of the way. Okay, so, it's got the little, what's in here exactly? A uh, little box that's got some pen adapters, some CDs, and the quick start guide. I've already got all of the drivers installed. Um, my MacBook doesn't have a CD drive, so thankfully that was already done. The USB cable that you can connect the tablet up to the computer, but as I said, I've actually hooked this one up with the, uh, the wireless, so I won't need to use that. We'll just need to work out how to attach that because I haven't used that before. And then the pen, now this pen is really cool. This is just a little holder. It doesn't serve any function, it doesn't recharge it. This thing has buttons on it, it's touch sensitive, it knows you know, there's something like uh, 2000 different pressure sensitivities you can use. So if you're do it using like a brush in Photoshop or lots of different applications actually, but you can set it so as you push harder, the opacity gets bigger or that the actual size of the pen gets bigger so you're lightly brushing and it's a low opacity small brush, and then as you push harder and harder, it gets bigger and more opaque, more dense. So that's pretty cool. And this thing doesn't have a battery in it, so I don't know how it, it's powered by magic. Harry Potter. That kind of thing. Opening up the actual unit here. Let me give you a little top down on this one that's probably more interesting. Okay, taking a look top down on this guy, it's really quite simple. You can see around here, that's the markers of the actual sensitive part of the pad. So that's what's gonna to correspond to your screen. Here you've got a series of buttons above and below, and then this one which, it, you know, there's nothing actually moving there, but that does act as a dial and a center click. So you can customize all of these buttons to have different functions. Likewise, you can customize the pen, the different buttons on there, and then the pressure to all serve different functions. And you can do it for each program. So for example, when I'm, Video editing, I could say use this button to uh, bring up the blade tool and this button to bring up the uh, the grabber tool. And then when I'm in Photoshop, have this turn grid lines on and have this bring levels up and so on and so forth. And when I've got a brush open, have this toggle the size or whatever you like. So you can build in a lot of the shortcuts just into these immediate buttons. Now, let's have a look around the sides. On the bottom, two little panels, that's where we're going to install the, the wireless kit. 
Now three sides have absolutely nothing on them. This side has the little USB port. That's to connect it to your computer and if you're using it wirelessly to recharge the battery. Here's where the little wireless unit goes in. And once you install that, then we're gonna get a little light to indicate how well it has been charged. But it's a really sleek little unit. These outside bits are a rubberized kind of finish and this in the middle is a, a, a matte finish. So for me, I would obviously have the buttons on the left hand side and then be drawing on the right hand side. It's really cool that it does also support touch so you can pinch and scroll and do all of those sort of things as well. And then you've also got the pen. And this one is directional. So if you're using a brush that's a funny shape, for example, as you move the pen around, the brush will move around as well. So it knows which part of the pen you're actually recording with. Again, despite the fact that this thing doesn't have a battery in it, pretty amazing. So let's actually get this thing set up then and hook up the Wi-Fi. Okay, installing the wireless. I'm doing this for the first time, obviously. Inside the box is a battery, the wireless pieces, and a little manual, but it seems like installing it is so simple that I won't even need the manual. This medium size has two little panels which slide off to reveal the compartments. In here, this is the, the battery. Let's get him out. It'll only go in one way, so there's the terminals. Slide the battery in, that's installed. And now this guy is the Wi-Fi module. So you can see on one side, once I get it out, come on, come on little fella. So you've got the part that plugs into your computer and then you've got the section that's going to actually plug into the compute, into the, the tablet. So let's take the little tray out, simple as that. Now having a look top down so you can look at it with me. You can see there's a little USB part there and this one here. So just sliding that straight on in, it fits like a glove. And then you can see it's got a little power button and the, the battery indicator there now. Taking it back down, then we've got one cover back on, the other cover back on. Oh, and you could use this to store your little dongle. So when you're not using it, you can store this guy in there or if you're traveling, for example. So that's pretty nifty. And then covering this one back up, then that's all good to go. You just need to leave it plugged into USB for you know overnight or however long to give it the initial charge. Let's plug it into the computer then. Okay, so I've just got it set up on the front of the computer here. Once the Wi-Fi, once this is all charged up, you just plug it in and then it will detect it via Wi-Fi. You can see I've got a little icon up there because I do have the drivers installed. But on this one, because I haven't charged it yet, we'll need to do that first. So, oops, lo and behold, here's the book project. Check it out, thank you very much. So for this, we'll initially take out the Wi-Fi unit and we'll just plug it in via ye olde cables so on the side it just plugs in there's the one spot for it easy peasy funnily enough this is made in japanesey and then plugging it into the computer yes we can see there's a little power light come on there it is starting to charge up the lights have all turned on on the screen here as well and it's working already. So now I can use this as a huge trackpad, use it with two fingers to grab or whatever. And then as soon as I put the pen on, I'm not even touching, it does follow me around. I'm about a centimeter or half an inch off the thing. It does track and as soon as I get onto what I want, go up and touch and it loads it up. That did work first off, I just have a slow internet connection. And then you can customize the buttons to be whatever you want. So I think it comes set that if you hold down one of the buttons and push, yeah, it opens up the right click button. So pretty simple. Now I just need to let it charge and then it'll all talk via Wi-Fi. Very nice. But in the meantime, you can just use it with your fingers as well. So this gives you a huge trackpad instead of the little one. Pretty groovy. Now one thing that just popped up that I think is really worth noting, 
unlike a trackpad where you, you know, you scroll and then you might need to scroll and scroll and scroll to get across, the dimensions of this do equate to the corners of your screen. And if you have a second screen in, then this equates to the two screens. So if you're down here and you wanna scroll across, you don't have to go sh -sh -sh to get your way across. This bottom corner equates to the bottom corner of the screen and the top corner equates to the top corner. So if you wanna go up to file menu, you just go to that point on the pad and that's not gonna move depending on where your uh, pen started off. So that's gonna take a bit of a sea change in my mind to realize that if I wanna to go to the bottom middle, I go to the bottom middle. I don't have to go all the way through. So that's absolutely simple to set up. I'm not the most technical guy and that was a breeze even for me. So now it's just a matter of spending a little bit of time and getting used to it. I did have a play with it at the Wacom HQ and it seemed fairly intuitive, you know, top corner equals top corner of your screen and so on. Um, and I really hope that it's going to help with my editing process. Um, I have a little extra surprise. I'm also using something a bit more advanced on my book than this one. Uh, I'll throw a link up on the screen there now and in the caption below where you can check that one out. Hope that's been of use to you. If you have any questions, please fire away. As I said, I'm learning this at the same time. And if you're interested to check out my Private Bodies book, it's a series of art nude photographs taken of people of all walks of life in their own home. It's available for pre-order up until October 2013 over at thatnikonguy.com. There's a link in the caption below. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.